Originally recognized as a distinguished alumni of the University of Philippines College of Business Administration with the UPAA Distinguished Award in Entrepreneurship and Employment Creation. Let's prepare our hearts together to experience the power of revival anointing. Registration starts on 23rd of April. Save the date and see you there. Hi everyone. Uh, we are doing a, a very special song competition. We want to do a, a theme song for our Congress. And, uh, you know, I, we want as many of you to send in as many entries as you can. And uh, you can see all the details on the slides that are provided for you. So keep it coming. Stronger. For CBC Ford Congress registration, first, identify the numbers of participants, fill out your personal information, and select your congregation and your t-shirt size. Secondly, it is compulsory to fill in your emergency contact information. Thirdly, select your preference on accommodation, meals, and transport. Once done, the total price will be shown at the bottom right. For payment method, you can either make a bank transfer or scan the QR to pay. Please email your receipt to cbccongress at cbcpj.org for verification. Finally, sign and take all the terms and conditions and you are done. A friendly reminder, all late registration received between 10 to 31st of July will have an additional fee of 50 ringgit per pack and subject to availability. So, sign up now! Stronger Together! Hey there, our Congress will be held on 31st of August to 2nd September. We are so excited to have Pastor Peter Tanchi as our Congress speaker. Pastor Peter Tanchi is the founder and senior pastor of CCF, Christ Commission Fellowship. CCF started as an evangelistic discipleship home Bible study with a few couples who were unchurched in 1983. Today, it has grown to over 40,000 members, 30 satellite churches throughout the Philippines and also expanded its borders to other parts of the world. Pastor Peter Tanji finished his master's degree in management at the Asian Institute of Management 
and doctorate degree in ministry at the International Graduate School of Leadership. He was recently recognized as a distinguished alumni of the University of Philippines College of Business Administration with the UPAA Distinguished Award in Entrepreneurship and Employment Creation. Let's prepare our hearts together to experience the power of revival anointing. Registration starts on 23rd of April. Save the date and see you there. Hi everyone. Uh, we are doing a, a very special song competition. We want to do a, a theme song for our congress. And, uh, you know, I, we want as many of you to send in as many entries as you can. And uh, you can see all the details on the slides that are provided for you. So keep it coming. Stronger Together Oh, come and join our hearts Oh! <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's different tunes that God has placed in your heart or whatever that God wants you to sing, uh, you know, if it has the theme on being stronger together, why don't you just put it, put it down, send it to us, and I'm sure you can do a better job than what I'm doing now. So send in your entries. We look forward to hearing from all of you. And lastly, for those who are 18 years old and above, kindly scan the QR code to register for CBC Head Counting. That is all for today. For CBC Ford Congress registration. First, identify the numbers of participants, fill out your personal information, and select your congregation and your t shirt size. Secondly, it is compulsory to fill in your emergency contact information. Thirdly, select your preference on accommodation, meals, and transport. Once done, the total price will be shown at the bottom right. For payment method, you can either make a bank transfer or scan the QR to pay. Please email your receipt to cbccongress at cbcpj.org for verification. Finally, sign and take all the terms and conditions and you are done. A friendly reminder, 
all late registration received between 10 to 31st of July will have an additional fee of 50 ringgit per pack and subject to availability. So sign up now. Stronger together! Hey there, our Congress will be held on 31st of August to 2nd September. We are so excited to have Pastor Peter Tanji as our Congress speaker. Pastor Peter Tanji is the founder and senior pastor of CCF, Christ Commission Fellowship. CCF started as an evangelistic discipleship home Bible study with a few couples who were unchurched in 1983. Today, it has grown to over 40,000 members, 30 satellite churches throughout the Philippines and also expanded its borders to other parts of the world. Pastor Peter Tanji finished his master's degree in management at the Asian Institute of Management and doctorate degree in ministry at the International Graduate School of Leadership. He was recently recognized as a distinguished alumni of the University of Philippines College of Business Administration with the UPAA Distinguished Award in Entrepreneurship and Employment Creation. Let's prepare our hearts together to experience the power of revival anointing. Registration starts on 23rd of April. Save the date and see you there. Hi everyone. Uh, we are doing a, a very special song competition. We want to do a, a theme song for our Congress. And, uh, you know, I, we want as many of you to send in as many entries as you can. And uh, you can see all the details on the slides that are provided for you. So keep it coming. Stronger Together Oh, come and join our hearts Oh! <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's different tunes that God has placed in your heart or whatever that God wants you to sing, uh, you know, if it has the theme on being stronger together, why don't you just put it, put it down, send it to us, and I'm sure you can do a better job than what I'm doing now. So send in your entries. We look forward to hearing from all of you. And lastly, for those who are 18 years old and above, kindly scan the QR code to register for CBC Head Counting. That is all for today. A very good morning to all of you joining us here this morning. So good to be back in the house of the Lord to bring an offering of praise and worship to Him. Come, let us worship our God and King together this morning. I lay my life down at your feet Cause you're the only one I need I turn to you when you are always there In troubled times it's you I seek I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am all to
morning every day of our lives God you deserve it all not only today Lord but all the days of our lives God you are worthy of it all thank you Lord it was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore what is your name what is your name Jesus you deserve the praise what is your name what is your name Jesus, you deserve 
Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as Your glory.
As part of our worship, we would like to bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we come before you to present the gifts of our tithes and offerings to you as our priestly service and as our acts of worship. We thank you for your provision and blessings to us. And we are truly grateful that you enable us to work with our hands in the marketplace and to manage the resources, the businesses, the workforce to provide for our needs, for the ministries of the church and through the church for the advancement of Christ's kingdom in the hearts of all people groups. So we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. CBC Ford Congress Registration First, identify the numbers of participants, fill out your personal information, and select your congregation and your t-shirt size. Secondly, it is compulsory to fill in your emergency contact information. Thirdly, select your preference on accommodation, meals, and transport. Once done, the total price will be shown at the bottom right. For payment method, you can either make a bank transfer or scan the QR to pay. Please email your receipt to cbccongress at cbcpj.org for verification. Finally, sign and take all the terms and conditions and you are done. A friendly reminder, all late registration received between 10 to 31st of July will have an additional fee of 50 ringgit per pack and subject to availability. So, sign up now! Stronger together! Hey there, our Congress will be held on 31st of August to 2nd September. We are so excited to have Pastor Peter Tanchi as our Congress speaker. Pastor Peter Tanchi is the founder and senior pastor of CCF, Christ Commission Fellowship. CCF started as an evangelistic discipleship home Bible study with a few couples who were unchurched in 1983. Today, it has grown to over 40,000 members, 30 satellite churches throughout the Philippines and also expanded its borders to other parts of the world. Pastor Peter Tanji finished his master's degree in management at the Asian Institute of Management and doctorate degree in ministry at the International Graduate School of Leadership. 
He was recently recognized as a distinguished alumni of the University of Philippines College of Business Administration with the UPAA Distinguished Award in Entrepreneurship and Employment Creation. Let's prepare our hearts together to experience the power of revival anointing. Registration starts on 23rd of April. Save the date and see you there. Hi everyone. Uh, we are doing a, a very special song competition. We want to do a, a theme song for our congress. And, uh, you know, I, we want as many of you to send in as many entries as you can. And uh, you can see all the details on the slides that are provided for you. So keep it coming. Stronger Together Oh, come and join our hearts Oh! <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's different tunes that God has placed in your heart or whatever that God wants you to sing, uh, you know, if it has the theme on being stronger together, why don't you just put it, put it down, send it to us and I'm sure you can do a better job than what I'm doing now. So send in your entries, we look forward to hearing from all of you. And lastly, for those who are 18 years old and above, kindly scan the QR code to register for CBC Head Counting. That is all for today. Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Our, our preaching topic today from the book of Colossians is entitled Beware of Empty Wayne uh, Religion. In another word, we are talking about what are the four the, the fourth teaching and I want to, to spend the first part of my message on what are empty when we region and then help us to connect with Jesus the fullness that we have in Jesus and the spiritual provision that we have in Jesus as his followers and so in the year of revival anointing the church wants to encourage us to continue to grow in the discipleship of our mind, in the discipleship of our heart, in the discipleship of uh, the community around us. Huh? So let's pray. Father, we come to your word and thank you for your word because we acknowledge that your word is the instruction for our Christian living and for our Christian conduct to help us to live in godliness and righteousness. So we welcome the ministry of the Spirit of God even right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. First, let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 16 to verse 23. In verse 8, the Apostle Paul told the Colossian Christian to see to it that no one take you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy. We depend on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. So let's move to verse 16 first. In verse 16, the Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the thing that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. In verse 18, do not let anyone who delight in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail what they have seen, they are puffed up with idle notion by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligament and sinew, grow as God causes it to grow. Verse 20, since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why? As though you still belong to the world, do you submit to it? Rule, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. This rule we have to do with 
thing that are all destined to perish with youth are based on merely human command and teaching. Such regulation indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body. But they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. So based on those verses that we read, my question is, now what was the fourth teaching? What was the heresy? First, we discover in verse 8, what we know as deceptive philosophy. Paul said, see to it, no, no one take you kept it through hollow and deceptive philosophy. And this hollow and deceptive philosophy it's a work of human tradition. It deals with the element of the world and portrait. It's empty delusion. It's not based on the reality that we have in Christ. And this detective philosophy is a combination of Eastern philosophy, Jewish legalism with element of Nazism. Now, the word not means to know. And in those days, the Nautic were a people who were in the know. They perceived themselves to be in the know about the deep thing of God. And the people who want to follow them were promised a close union with God, meaning to say they can achieve a spiritual perfection. How? By embracing the spiritual fullness and full knowledge entering into the teaching and the ceremony cried by the not And this deceptive philosophy, not deceptive, grew out of the philosophic, philosophical question. Why is there evil in the world The creation was made by a holy God? And so they came up with some presumption, they came up with some belief. Firstly, matter was evil. And if matter was evil, how could a holy God uh, come in contact with evil matter. Therefore, it had to be a series of emanations from God to his creation. And they also believe in a powerful spirit world that used the material thing to attack mankind. Secondly, in verse 16, another fourth idea about this heresy or this fourth teaching had got to do with what we call religious city. Paul said, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or Sabbath day. And all these are just a shadow of the thing that was to come because the reality is only found in Christ. And Paul warning to the Colossians about what they eat or drink or a religious festival, a new moon celebration and other religious practices determined by the calendar. Now the Jewish people also watch the calendar. And the fourth teacher therefore taught that Old Testament law, especially the dietary law, was also useful in attaining spiritual perfection. And the Nazis also believed that the angel and the heavenly bodies uh, influence the life of people. Thirdly, fourth worship. Verse 18 to verse 19, the Apostle Paul said, Do not let anyone who delight in false humility and the worship of angel disqualify you. And then in verse 21, he said, Do not handle, do not take, do not touch. Paul is talking about the fourth area of the heresy or the fourth teaching, and that is in regard to the doctrine of man. Paul said, look, this rule we have to do with things that are all destined to perish with youth are all based on merely human command and teaching. They have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, for humility and the harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. In another word, uh, Jewish legalism, uh, like the custom of the Gamchitzen, Old Testament law, especially the dietary law, and other definite, de definite rule and regulation, enslave them in all this false worship. 
and did matter what evil they have to find some way to control their own human nature in the pursuit of perfection so either they go into very rigid discipline or they go to the other extreme engage in all kind of sin so with that background you notice in the day of the apostle paul message to the colossian there were already all the false teaching and heresy, deceptive philosophy, religiosity, false worship, and the doctrine of men. Now, what about us today? Of late, we have seen an increase in the proliferation of Christian cult across our nation. Firstly, the cult that came from Korea, now as the Xinjiangji or the Xintianji, in Malaysia, they are known as the Thought and Light Fellowship. And they believe that the return of Jesus is only spiritual, not a physical return. They don't believe in the Trinity. They believe that Jesus is not God because Mary cannot carry God in her womb. And they also accept the fact that we can use lie and deceit or deception if if serve God purposes. And they also believe that a Christian needs to accurately perceive Jesus' parable in the gospel in order to be saved. Another group, the Church of the Almighty God, the group called believe is that Jesus Christ had already returned to us and is presently living as a tiny woman. And so, it's unlikely in all the Church of the Almighty God right here in Malaysia hold that Jesus had returned as a tiny woman and worship by the group as Almighty God. The third group are the World Mission Society Church of God. They believe in God the Father and God the Mother. And for them, God the Mother is Tangjija. And do you notice something about all this fourth Christian cult? They either deny Jesus or they dethrone the preeminent of Jesus. Another group, the Darabang. Darabang means the upper room in Korean. And this group believe that they are the only church, they are the only vehicle that were involved in spreading the gospel over the last 2,000 years of church history. They advocate duality, demonology, meaning to take Christ and demon are on equal footing. And you must know the demon in order to know Jesus. And they also believe that all curses on humans, including all our body, diseases, misfortune, accident, and poverty are all due to demon. Now, what is one common factor among all these four religions and heresy? In the day of Paul, message to the Colossian Christian, and also right, right here today, yeah, two things. They either deny Christ or they dethrone him and rob him of his right, rightful place of preeminent. So with that, the second part of my sermon today, I want to talk to us that in the midst of all this fourth Christian cult, heresy, fourth teaching around us, new age, teaching, occulted teaching, and so on. Let's look to the Bible and learn what we have in Christ Jesus, who we are in Christ Jesus, and what we can do in Christ Jesus. And the passage before us today, also from Colossians chapter 2, but I'm going to read to you from verse 9 to verse 15. In verse 9, Paul said, look, for in Christ, all the fullness of the deity live in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In Him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hand. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with Him in baptism in which you were also raised with Him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your teeth, 
and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He had taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the power and authority, he made a public protector of them, triumphant, triumphant him over them by the cross. But I want you to take note of verse 9 and verse 10. Verse 9 and verse 10 describe to us that Christ is a source of reality and truth. First, Christ is the fullness of God. In another word, Christ is a sum total of all that God is, all of his being and attribute. And secondly, in verse 10, believers are complete in Christ, and Christ is the head of all power and authority. Now let's go further and look at these two verses in further clarity. Now, in Verse 9, Paul said, When you are born into the family of God by faith in Christ, you are born complete. So he said in verse 9, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity live in bodily form. In another word, when you are born into the family of God by faith in Christ, you are born complete. No wonder Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, he wrote, his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In another word, God gives you everything you ever need for life and godliness. And God never had to call back any of his mother because something is lacking or faulty. And when I was a young man, I remember in 2010, on 19th of November, Toyota record more than 2.3 million vehicles involving a gas pedal and dangerous accelerated EQ. And in the same year, Honda Motor Company announced a voluntary worldwide recall of 646,000 compact car models like the Pit, the Jet, and the City model. But for us, God never had to call any one of us his model because something is lacking or faulty when he made us we are born complete in Christ so with that Paul went on to verse 10 and said look we are complete in Christ in Christ you have been brought to fullness he is the head over every power and authority so the question is what we have in Christ and we discover in the Bible in Christ, we had received wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. In Christ, we had received the fullness of the nature of Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And in Christ, we received the fullness of life now. And abundant life. John chapter 10, verse 10. He came to give us life and life abundant. The fullness of joy, John chapter 15, verse 11, and he provides for us the necessity of life, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And the fullness of the Spirit of God, of God Himself. Not only that, in Christ we receive the fullness of life eternal. In Christ we receive the fullness of the knowledge of God. Amen. And therefore, from Colossians chapter 2, we notice two things. We notice, number one, that Christ is the fullness of God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. And we also learn that believers are complete in Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Now, more than that, when we go to verse 11 to verse 15, the Apostle Paul wanted to understand another very important truth that we have all the spiritual provision in Christ. So in those few verses, from verse 11 to verse 15, we see a fourfold identification with Jesus Christ. That means to say, a fourfold identification of our completeness in Christ. First, we are circumcised in Him. Verse 11, in Him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hand. Your whole self 
ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. In another word, the apostle Paul is saying the old nature, the old self, ruled by the flesh, was put off, rendered inoperative, so that we need no longer be enslaved to its desire. In another word, the power of sin has been broken as we yield to Christ and walk in the power of the Spirit. Secondly, verse 12 to verse 13, we are alive in Him, alive in Christ. Paul said, having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through your faith in the working of God, who raised Him from the dead. When you were dead in your sin and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgive all our sins. Amen. And baptism, therefore, is our identification with Christ in His death, in His burial, and in His resurrection. And this identification means that whatever happened to Christ or to happen to us, we have experienced the energy of God, the fullness of the life of God in a true faith in Christ. Thirdly, verse 14, we are free from the law having cancelled the shaft of our legal indebtedness, we can't pay back. We cannot do anything about it. And that indebtedness stood against us and condemned us. But now, Christ had taken it away, nailing it to the cross. So therefore, our relationship with Jesus must be out of love, not out of fear like a slave, but it's a love relationship with him in a communion of love. And finally, in verse 15, we see another very important identification with Jesus Christ that provides for our completeness in him. But 15, having disarmed the power and authority, he made a puppet protector of them, triumphant him over them by the cross. And in this verse, we can See three great victory of Jesus. He sweep Satan and his army of their weapon. Dead. He exposed Satan's defeat and wickedness. And Satan was disgraced and defeated. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 to 15. Invite us to be connected with Jesus. For we share in Christ victory over Satan. In those few verses from verse 11 to verse 15, we see our fourfold identification with Jesus Christ. That we are complete in Christ, circumcised in Him, alive in Him, free from the law, and victorious in Him. And so this morning, as I bring my message to a close, we can see that in the midst of all the false teaching, heresy, all the false belief, all the for Christian crowd around us. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 15 remind us of the fullness of all that we have in Christ Jesus. Firstly, Christ is the fullness of God. And when we believe in Him, we also receive that fullness. We are complete in Christ. In another word, Christ is the source of all reality and truth. And thirdly, we can draw on all the spiritual provision in Christ. We are circumcised in Him, alive in Him, free from the law, and victorious in Him. May God help us to grow into all the fullness of all that we are as Christ disciples. But more than that, we are not enslaved by fear, but we cultivate a communion of love with our Lord Jesus. And in that communion with the Lord, we hear His voice, we obey His instruction, and live in the fullness of all that God had for us, and do His will from our heart. To be connected with Jesus. Amen. First, the power of sin has been broken. And we have the energy of God through faith in Christ to live out our Christian life, and obey God out of love, and share in Christ victory over Satan. So what a wonderful what a wonderful position and provision we have in Christ. So my question is, 
Are we live, living up to it by faith? Shall we pray and look to God? Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you that we are reminded that we are complete in Christ. And that when we come into your kingdom, we come to know Jesus as our personal, personal Lord and Savior, we embrace the fullness of all that we have in Christ. Forgiven of our sin, back to a right relationship with you. And Lord, this is our prayer today to help us to walk in the reality that Jesus is the thought of our life and the thought of truth and help us to walk in the reality of all that Christ has done for us and help us to live out in the fullness of Christ's life and experience Christ's fullness in our daily living. But more than that, beyond that, Lord, we do not just want to live up for ourselves, for we are reminded that Christ has died for us. And the life that we live now, we do not live for ourselves, but for Christ who died and who live again. So we invite the presence of God, the Spirit of the living God, to impart your life and your strength to your children and to every one of us, so that we can be the vessel of Christ's life and display the beauty of Christ in all of our relationship. We bless your name today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We hope that everyone was blessed by the word. And a quick reminder that if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, do remember to press on that subscribe button so that you will get the latest update on what's happening in our church as well as our morning devotion, prayers, and so forth. Thank you and have a wonderful week ahead.